Hey everybody. It's, there it is. It's the Z Lord podcast. And there's Carter with his little shaker. shaker. With his shaker, 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 there shaker. There you go. And here's Tess with her mover, mover, mover. <laughs> We're shakers and movers. So Carter, here we are. We're still in Maine. We are. We're having a wonderful time seeing the leaves change. Change is the name of the game. That's the only thing there is constant in life, except God. Our connection to spirit. Yes. God is the only thing that doesn't change. But he changes in our experience as we get to know more. Like, for instance, if you read scripture, and as soon as you understand it and think about it for a while, then it changes. And it becomes deeper in something else. So God or, changes in our mind, but God never changes. God is the same all, always. Or if we don't read scripture and we just experience spirit through quietness and stillness and walks in the woods and not listening to other people's opinions, then that changes us. Yes. It changes us. Yeah, and the, I think the more we the more we get in on that level, the more it, 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 it we grow. And as it grows, we expand and it gets bigger all the time. It changes. Yes. So that changes. So our topic today yes. is basically what can we do to stay attuned to the real source of all, which is whether you call it God or spirit or nature or the moment. It's, it's, a, it's that certain special something that you just feel good about when you're in tune with it. And get the most out of your life. Well, that's important for some people to get the most out of their life. And other people are just happy to, you know, just kind of experience it as it happens. Um, you're, a, you're an achiever, Carter. You're more of an achiever than, hardly, than most people I have met in my life. So I think that, yeah, that would be high priority for you. But me, well, I think that I'm not so much of an achiever as you are. I'm okay with just ex- just being and experiencing the moment. But yet, you know, well, I, just I say, have goals. F- f- how do you, how, how do we how do we feel great all the time? And how do we how do, how do we feel like we're fulfilling what we're supposed to be doing and that we're really on the path and we're not just kind of mean being true to ourselves. Yeah, and we're just not wrapped up. It's uh-huh. so easy to get wrapped up and mm-hmm. being pissed off about something or mm-hmm. being involved in our day to day or getting involved in making money or doing mm-hmm. something right. physical. The question is how do we keep an eye mm-hmm. on the big picture so that we're we're glowing with Ooh, glowing. I like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're glowing with mm-hmm. with the golden light of being in tune with with on a high level so that we really feel great. So that and we, glowing with possibilities. I like that. The possibilities. So the question is, how do we keep that in our mind and not get hung up on the day-to-day okay, mundane you first, stuff? Okay, you first, you first, you first. I'm asking well, you, Carter Lord, how do you keep that glow of feeling attuned? Well, first of all, I don't, probably don't do it very well all the time, so I'm, I'm in and out, and I think we're all in you, and out. Wait a minute, would you give yourself an F in attun- no, attunement to I the higher no, sources? No, I wouldn't give myself an F. <laughs> I'd give myself a, a, a. Sometimes I'm pretty good, but I, I, you know, you forget, and you get driving around or doing something, and off on a, doing something, and you and, and you and you get hung, you get caught in the physical. But I think the whole thing, like about the, in the study that we do is how do we act in a way that will keep us tuned to the higher forces and to and to god you know how do we and one way is is to act as jesus for instance would act if you if we it's clearly written and it and it's a it's a fact that if we act as god would have us act then then we're we're automatically we automatically jump up there and the and another thing would be if we can keep serving other people and also keep our eye on our smallness and remembering the largeness of all the things that are out there in life like listen to this this came somebody sent this to me astronomers 
have spotted two record-breaking plasma jets blasting out of a supermassive black hole and into the void beyond its own galaxy. The large streams are the largest ever seen, measuring 23 million light years from end to end. A Whoa. distance that would cross un- one, uh, you can't even imagine uh, you how can't, large a it is. distance that would cross 140 Milky Ways arranged Whoa. side by side. What? They named these jets Porphyrian. The fierce narrow streams emerge from the top and bottom of a supermassive black hole and have a combined power output equivalent to trillions of suns. Okay, now what this is, is this? Wait this a minute, is what just, has this got to do with our topic? Well, well because this is getting, it's, so, this is it's so cosmic. No, but it's so <laughs> it's so overwhelming. It's so out and, there. and we are all our little stuff that we're thinking about, up with our little tiny little problems and stuff are so minuscule up against something like that, we'll that if we can, if I, Carter, can remember that, and <laughs> anytime I'm upset about some stupid whatever, anything, any discussion or whatever, something that I, it's not bugging me, <laughs> if I can remember that, oh my gosh. everything pales before something like that, and the whole universe is like that. And I'm making a little movie right now about this lady singing, and... And and the, the the little pictures that I'm that I'm putting in there of nature are just these manifestations that are of God that are so spectacular that if I'm if I get involved in and wrapped up in them they're just beyond me. So I think that that, that is one thing. If I if, if I if we can get beyond ourselves and appreciate God or manifestations of God or serving other people or something other than ourself. Well, what That's I'm, how what we I'm get he- there. What I'm really hearing you say is, okay, you may call it God, but, but really, you know, a bigger word is nature. A bigger word that more people you know, from all different walks of life, not just the Buddhists, not just the Muslims, not just the Christians, but people who really understand that overwhelmingness of, of like the cosmic trail that you were just mentioning – Nature is, is 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 it's kind of a small word for this vastness that is our experience, and it's true. When I think about that magnificence, like like right now, it's the full moon. I mean, it's just so beautiful. It's just so powerful. You know, it just sweeps you away at the beauty of this of this experience of being alive. And you don't have to go to a book. You don't have to go to a a workshop. You don't have to even have a teacher. You just have to have the ability to look up at the sky and feel the vastness of this experience, like you said, you know, and and what little things we are when we think about, oh, my feelings are hurt, or, oh, I can't make up my mind what to do, or, you know, and all those things. And we're wrapped up in our little (laughs) ego stuff, and... And the manifestation of the universe and God is all around us. And each one of us is can participate in that every day. Even in the middle of New York City, there are weeds in the sidewalk. There's trees. If, if, we, man, if we just absorb any plant or animal or anything that is like some manifestation of the all-powerful, it's right there in front of us everywhere all the time. And all, all I have to do is recognize it. So when wow. I'm down and low, that's that's a that's a place to go to to uplift my consciousness if I can do it. And I'm 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 hopelessly inept at it, but I do it from time to time. <laughs> you know? Well, so how do you catch yourself if you think you're hopelessly inept? Like I know I'm just going to talk for myself. I know that when I'm not feeling in that groove that I can call serenity or bliss, just contentment, not hilariously happy, not, you know, being sad about anything or in a state of fear, but just right in that groove, that middle way. When I'm there, I feel like I'm in tune with what I'm here for, what my soul came to, to, to do. But then there's other times, I've been talking to you about this lately, how indecisive I am about several really big issues going on in my life. One of them is my body, about what to do about as my body is uh, changing. And I'm talking about my joints, 
what to do about it. Do your I, knee. You're do talking I, about your knee in do particular. I, do I live with pain? Do I take advantage of modern technology? And one day I'm positive that I can live with the pain. The next day I, it's unbearable. And so I'm going back and forth. And, and that indecisiveness is also a part of the way I experience the culture, the, the, the culture that we live in, the society. I'm, I'm very much like on the fence about do I want to be involved or do I want to really have like a, a protection about being involved, you know, whether yeah. it's whether it's social media or knowing the latest and greatest news or the latest and greatest foul kind of streaming event. Every no. it seems like everything these that. it seems like everything these days that I try to to get into in the entertainment world we is don't want the foul it's just so negative. Poison. Well, no, we don't want it, but we want to know what's going on in the world and and so we check into it and Oftentimes, it's, a, it's such a turnoff. It's so disgustingly raw and ugly. So there's a part of me that is happy just to curl up with a good book, you know, and keep myself protected. And so anyway, the, the being attuned is sometimes just means that we have to make decisions. And we have to figure out how to be attuned. Yeah, and I think it, <clears throat> it's good. It's the older we, the older I get, and the older everybody I know gets. So we're getting up there now. So we've been around for a while. So listen, young people listen to Z Lord. You don't no, have to. I know, but you don't I, have what to I'm just talk to is, the oldies. Is that what I'm saying is is that the, as I've grown, as I've a, as I've grown older, I, my experience has has shown me. Uh, you know, I've, I've had enough experience that when I feel good and when I feel bad, and, and, and I'm feeling pretty good these days. But I spent, I've had a lot of practice thinking about it, and and I'm working at it a lot. And I wasn't necessarily so aware of it when I'm in the middle of business and we're trying to make a living and raising the kids and all the things that we do that we all get wrapped up in. And 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 uh, and, and I've discovered that if 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 the the big worries and the big things that take our time and take us away from feeling good are almost always when I'm wrapped up in myself and when I'm wrapped up in my own little silly little small little things and the tool of number one being aware that it's happening that's the first thing that's mm-hmm. that's one of the hardest things absolutely is that you, you're yeah. going along you're feeling shitty and you're not even aware of it. You're just you're just going through the motions and doing the thing. So the first thing to do is to recognize when you're not feeling good and pay attention to it. Well, listen, that's what feelings are all about. So, you know, in order to be aware, one has to have a relationship with our feelings. And so, therefore, right away it brings up addiction. Because people who are in addiction are trying to stuff their feelings. Whether it's by eating too much, drinking too much shopping too much, watching their screen too much. That's that's the way that modern people stuff their feelings. So I got to bring that up, having already, you know, disclosed the fact that many, many times on Z Lord that I am a recovering addict. And so I have to always be careful that I'm not in an active addiction. And that's, but that's the ultimate ego stuff, isn't it? Isn't that the ultimate selfishness is is being wrapped up in some addiction so that you're in, in your little world mm-hmm. and you're in your little stuff and you're not thinking about anybody else but yourself and you're certainly not observing just a simple tree in your yard, in a subdivision, in, a, in, a, in the most mundane, non-nature, well-groomed, well-coiffed, whatever, <laughs> in the midst of all of that, mm-hmm. there is a plant in your yard that is magnificent beyond anything you can ever grasp if you or I just take the time to stop and look at it and look at the little bug or the or whatever it is, the little snake, whatever it is that's moving across an ant, a butterfly, anything is so is so huge if I just will stop and pay attention. So you stay you're still saying that the, the best way for for you and I agree to stay attuned to the magnificence of this life, this poss- the possibility is through nature. Well, it's one great way 
It's, and, and it's always there. The point is, is that you think, oh, if you're not in Mount Kilimanjaro and it's not dramatic, then you, you know, it's not any fun. But that's not true. It's, it's, it's absolutely not. Every little place in the world has got some bark on a tree uh-huh. or some something that is beyond yeah. what you know and can grasp how it got there. And you can and pondering it and being involved in it takes you from your ego and takes you out of it. And if you can get on the now and be there for that moment while you're observing that and you can just be and you can just be part of the universe. That is a great place to be if we can learn how to do it. Well, you, okay, Carter, you say these things, but yet you were a, a little bit down on yourself just a few minutes ago saying <laughs> you, you were true. not very good at it. So, you know, you're sending out a couple signals here. like It's um, a work in progress. <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that it's a work in progress and I need to be kind to myself and I need to recognize that it's a work in progress. You sound pretty wise, you know, if you listen to your but words, it's always but then you there. say you're, you're not doing very well. Well, well it's, 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 it's like my dad used to say. I said, well, what do you think about this? He says, well... I think about I think it's red on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and on I think it's green on Tuesday, Thursday, and mm-hmm. Saturday. So we 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 we're, we're animals of change. We, we we're constantly in change, and and one of the things that we can do is try to pay attention to when we feel crappy, and try and, and actively do something about it. And it's it's possible. It's within our grasp. It's just like if 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 I ponder this. These jet streams that are that that are long enough to cross 140 million galaxies, Jeez. or 140 Phenomenal. galaxies, mm-hmm. it's okay. it's be so beyond anything that you can grasp. If the minute you think about that, you yeah. you can it's, you can get on it, the now, right now. Boggles the brain. So I would like to just say that when my mind is messing with me, I find the non-thinking approach works for me the best, which is to get quiet as soon as I can, to listen to my breath, to realize that breath is the key for consciousness, awareness, mindfulness, however you want to say it, and to get out of the thinking mode and to really experience, you know, that that majesticness, that that awesomeness that the, the, those cosmic events are causing at, in the world of science. But if we go inside and experience what's happening with our consciousness and when we connect with our consciousness, the same thing is happening with us Yes, in, the, in our inner world. And our body is beyond anything we can ever grasp. It's right us. All the little blood vessels and all the things that are going on are so complicated and there's so much happening and and we forget about it and we get wrapped up in something stupid and small and and what you're also talking about is uh, is stopping the monkey mind and getting on the the moment and that is the, the great techniques for doing that and using the mantra and doing the Eckhart Tolle thing where he presence yeah where he we tune where, into where presence he zo- zooms in on right now right this instant because if we're present there's never anything wrong. If we can get present, all of the bad and the good and everything else is, is gone. We're just here. So let's explore that just for a second. The magic moment of the now, I like to call it. There's, there's not the moment to come. There's not the moment that has passed. There's nothing to worry about that might happen in the future. There's nothing to regret or analyze or figure out that happened in the past. There's just this very split second breath moment right here, right now. And to me, that's that's where God resides. That's where the spirit is. That's where contentment is. And for me, the trick is to stay in that sweet groove. As much as possible. It, it takes discipline. Yeah, it does. Well, you're pretty good at, at the at the mantra part, and and, and the you're you're pretty good at stilling your mind. I, I've been observing you for thirty three years. I'd I give you, I give you high marks for 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 for, for 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 your ability to do this. You're pretty, you can be pretty, pretty calm in a lot of different situations. I. I'll give you credit. 
Much as I... Uh, <laughs> much as you re- regret having to say that, huh? I, I am a useful partner. But, you know, the magic of life is so incredible. I mean, it's not just the full moon. It's not just those comets that the science people are letting us know about. I mean, it really is our own bodies. And the magic is like the microcosm of this majestic experience of life, no matter how much we experience in the outer world or not, is it's happening right within our own, own body. body awareness. It's like a galaxy. Our body yeah. is like a galaxy, the galaxy. of complication <laughs> of all the stuff. The galaxy within. Yeah. And, it, and we're walking around with it and we're... You know, like me, I'm thinking, oh, I'm too fat. I got an extra flab. I got oh this God. and I got that. And I'm thinking We're talking about, about somebody who has not one single ounce of fat on his body. No, but I mean, that's what we do. That's what I do. That's what we. That's what all of us do from time to time. We're all not all of us. Not every. Up. A lot of people don't have that awareness. You're you're hyper aware of. Uh, you know, your physicality because you were an athlete and because you came from great athletes. Both your parents were Yeah, but everybody's c- thinking incredible. about their hair or their mm-hmm. clothes or whatever. I'm just, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's that just it is your something. And, and the less amount of time we can spend worrying about that, the better because it's all okay. We're, it is what it is and we're, each one of us is a magnificent human being no matter how we perceive ourselves it's wrong because we're 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 a galaxy in and of (laughs) our own self each one of us and it's 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 incredible if 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 i can remember it and not not allow myself to wallow down in some depressed thought or something's not going right and well you must be kind to yourself yeah, I mean, well, all like of us. Self love is the beginning of it. Every of everything, and it and and the self love thing is not just about like you know saying, oh yeah, I love myself, but it really means cut out the bad self talk. You know, I mean, I'm not picking on you precisely. I'm saying for myself too. All of us. But we, we to be mindful that words are powerful, and the words we tell ourselves has a lot to do with how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about the whole world. So, I mean, a good way to start with awareness is to just, like, moderate how we talk to ourselves. Like, you know, am I encouraging myself or do I, you know, chastise myself a lot? And um, I I try my best to to not put myself down because I certainly have have experienced self-loathing to the oops degree. Everybody does. Yeah, but I mean, I was in addiction so badly that for me it was life or death. It's not just, oh, well, everybody does that, you know. I mean, I had to really get disciplined about it. And so much so that when I have a negative thought in my head, I literally shake my head, you know, like physically. I have to shake it and saying, you know, this is going away from love. And whether it's talking about myself inside there or talking about another person. So... I don't want to get obsessed about, you know, regulating my thoughts, but I I am aware of the fact that if I allow myself to have a negative thought, that's going to manifest as a negative something or other, a negative feeling or a bad day or a bad decision. Yeah, it really, the, it then, really does catch up with you. And the next thing to do is stop thinking about yourself after a minute or two. You can think about yourself for a while, that's fine, but not very much because... It's really about everybody else. It's about other. It's not about us. It's, we're all so wrapped up and wallowing in ourselves, myself yeah. included, that, that I just have to remind myself to get away from myself and start thinking about someone else or something else I have, other than me. I had an interesting all experience the, the last couple of days. I have had a terrible itch. I think it's poison ivy. And so at times the itch would just be unbearable. And I just wanted to rip my arm to shreds, you know, scratching it because it feels so good when you have an itch. But I knew that that would be bad, you know, because it spreads and it also might cause an infection. So I, I tried a little mind game on myself. I said, what can I do besides, you know, putting on the calamine lotion and doing the homeopathic stuff I do? But it was three days of really unbearable itchiness. And so I, I experimented with different mental diversions. And I would use like uh, like a good thought, a positive thought, 
a mantra to see how that worked, and that was very successful to get oh, away, yeah? to get away from the itching. That's and, good. And then I did things like physical activities. You know, I said, okay, I'm going to go for a a brisk walk, or you know, or, or, or cooking, or you know, washing, or whatever a physical activity is to get away from thinking about that itch, about that dis, uh, you know, that uh, disruption on my skin. And I, I had a lot of fun with figuring it out, how I could that, that's dis- a perfect disrupt example. It. Get, now, if you can get out of yourself and get it away, you think about something else, you've solved the problem. Yeah, you switch your thinking. But first, you have to have the awareness. Oh, I'm thinking about the itching. Oh, if I don't change it, I'm going to scratch. That's and right. then you I might get aware. an infection. you got to be thinking about you got to be aware. The that's first, the first thing, thing is I had to have the awareness of being aware of the, that negative thing going on with my body. And it's the same thing with my knees. I'm feeling very compromised in my joints. I abused my body a lot when I was younger, and, you know, I'm paying the price for it now. And so when we go in too much of an incline, because Carter and I walk three to four miles every day, when it's too much of an incline, I suffer. And when it's flatter, it's easier. And so... It's a simple matter of, yes, we've decided that we have to go flatter, even we're, though it might not be so we're gorgeous. We're going flatter. It's flatter. Flatter <laughs> for us right now. That's just the we way went, it we is. Went, we went flat today. <laughs> and it was uh, easier on my knees. Yesterday it was up, more up and down, and it was harder on you. And and if we go over to the other side, man, it's rough over there. The bear hunting territory, man, it's up and down and a lot of rocks and steep and Jeepers. So what are some of the other things that you do, Carter, to stay attuned? Like if you're feeling irritated or worried, because you're a worrier. Do you have, like, things that you can share with our friends? Yeah, I try, to, friends? I, I, I try to do the meditation stuff, too, and try, and try to eliminate the monkey mind. And try, but, but, you know, I'm just learning about these things after all these years, and, and, and the, 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 the study that we've been doing lately has really helped me recognize that there are some very, very specific behaviors that I can do that get me out of myself and get me in tune with, with a higher life. And, and it's working, you know, things like specifically trying to cooperate with others or or, or, or having pers- patience and putting yeah that was patience one of, that's is a one big of the biggest one. parts of our study so if i'm you're sitting at the traffic i mean how 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 much of my life have i spent being pissed off that i'm waiting in a line somewhere <laughs> i mean a lot way more how much time have i wasted in that mm-hmm. and so if it, rather than that if i could just immediately jump shift into a gear and recognize now this is required this is my patience time in fact, this study that we're doing says you cannot approach God if you're impatient. Mm-hmm. You can't. Mm-hmm. It's a fundamental axiom that you have got to be patient in order to approach God. Well, that's why that's so an many, amazing. That's thought. why so many people use drugs and alcohol because, I mean, like you know, there's it, it's a, there's a reason why alcohol is also called spirits. Because people just immediately get out of themselves, and some people have, you know, like this euphoric feeling that they think is God, or uh, you know, like better a better reality than what they left. But when they start having the hangovers or coming back into the entry of of like leaving that chemical state, they'll find out that it's, it's not worse. so pleasant. Yeah, it's and worse and those back. those feelings of euphoria can be sustained with prayer, meditation, mindfulness, stilling the breath, being quiet, going to nature. But it takes work. It takes commitment. It takes. It takes it, awareness. It, it, yeah, it takes awareness. Really, is what it. And really and takes. making a decision. Is awareness and reckon, Yeah, making, making a decision. decision that you definitely want to be happy. That you definitely do not want to be in a state of, of agitation. Yep, and recognizing that we can, it's within our power. And the whole thing about happiness mm. is within our grasp. And, and, it, it, and starts that, with a, it starts with a decision. But before the decision can be made, you have to have the awareness that 
things yeah. are not right that with, not within happy. our own being. <laughs> right. You have to you have to say to yourself, you know, there's something missing from my life. And then you set out seeking, seeking you shall find, as they say. So if you start trying stuff, yeah. it's just like if you've, yeah, okay. And there's so many ways of finding answers these days, especially. There's so many wonderful teachers out there. There's so many great, like, courses and workshops and opportunities. Every town has a yoga studio. I'm not saying that yoga is the answer for everybody, but... You know, other people um, find a lot of comfort in alternative ways of finding answers about about inner happiness. Yeah, it's it's one way to go out and engage in a bunch of other people and courses and all that stuff. But but the tree that is in your yard <laughs> or the blade of grass is right there, <laughs> and it's always right there. And also, the other thing is that we are fantastic as we are each and every single one of us is there it's not somewhere else it's not in memphis it's not at the graceland it's not in alaska it's not in new york it's not anywhere wherever you are is the ultimate part of the universe and right now too it's not just about this oh, moment this moment oh, I right have here to, i have to prepare i have to give everything up. is I here have, everything is right here everything within us. is right here if we can just take a it takes moment a, it takes and a long time. tap into that it takes a long place. time to understand it took me a long time to understand that and i'm still working on it every single day but truly uh quietness and and it's amazing how great the tiny little plants are and the little bird, the little bird that's out there. I mean, <laughs> it's just unbelievable what they're, what they're doing, and there they are. And, and we're, and all the little blood things that are going through my body and the little toenails that are growing and the, the interconnectedness of, of, of the, the it's complex make, it's systems like, in, our, in our own body. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, what, it's unbelievable magical. that each and single person is a universe unto <laughs> themselves everywhere. Nothing is required to be anywhere else than just right where you are, right where you are and doing what you're doing. Uh, all of life is right there with us every day, each day, wherever we are. And you don't have to be anywhere else. That's but beautiful, you're right here. Thank you for that reminder. I encourage everyone to just take a moment and reflect and realize that this is true. Everything that we have is right within us, right this moment, if we can just get still enough to access it. And everybody is there. And appreciate it. It's like our friend Sushila that was dying, and she was pretty high being. She was pretty prayed up. And she went over to the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> Somehow, she, this is a vegetarian who never eats anything. I mean, right. she's this is a vegetarian lady, and it's a very kind of a high prayerful type around those kind of people. Goes to the Cracker Barrel for coffee, and she looked around the Cracker Barrel of all these American kind of middle class people that are in there having their breakfast and bacon and eggs, bacon and <laughs> eggs, and eating hog meat and eating all everything and right. eggs and all that stuff. So and she said she looked around and she saw all these beaming souls, beaming. Everybody was beaming with goodness and with God in them. And she said she could see them all, all interspersed, everyone in the whole place. And what a great thought and what a great place to see it in the Cracker Barrel, which is like the most everyday place in American life. It's most mundane, regular place. And if you think of it, it's just full of God beings. How great is that? What a great vision to see that. And I mean, it's just, it's the, the, we're, that's what's happening. That's the ultimate and if of being If we just can plug tuned. into it, if I can plug into it, it just is, it's just... Fulfilling in every possible way. The moment that the, that's that's like the Holy Spirit wrapping you up, if if we can grasp that. Yes, that's so, beautiful. That's what the Holy Ooh, Spirit is. Wow, that's a okay. beautiful image. We'll leave you with that beautiful image that Carter has just painted for us. 
All right. And and maybe we can all just take a moment to get quiet and realize that we are a galaxy within ourselves, that we are a universe unto ourselves, and that all that we need and all that we want is right within our own being, right now, right here. Om Namah Shabaya.